Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to take you through my ProRes RAW workflow. We're going to look at everything from setting up the camera, setting up the recorder, and then ingesting the footage into the Mac. And from there, we'll prepare the footage to be edited in Final Cut Pro. And I'll show you some of the benefits of using ProRes RAW. So let's get started by looking at some of the settings I'm going to use on the Sony FX3. We'll start by going into external output in the setup menu. And there's a few things in here we need to make sure we set. So first of all, we've got record media during HDMI output. So this is whether or not you want to record internally on the FX3 at the same time. So I've got that set to on. Um, output resolution I've got set here to 2160p. But I think you can also switch that to auto and that will work as well. So moving down the list, we've got raw output. This is what we select to turn on uh, ProRes raw output. So I'll switch that on now and you'll notice that the uh, Ninja 5 changes mode and you get a warning on the camera telling you that you have to connect a device that supports RAW. Uh, next down we've got RAW output settings. So this is where you choose between either 25p or 50p recording. And this also affects the internal recording as well. So it's worth remembering that. Next down we've got color gamut. So I choose sgamut 3cine And then I've got time code set to on. And I've also got record control set to on because that enables the camera to start the Ninja recording. And then finally, I've got four channel output set to channel one, channel two. If you wanted to send channel three and four using four channel audio down to the uh, recorder, then you can change that here. So that's the external output now set up for recording RAW. But I'll go back into the menus and explain to you a couple of things that you need to understand before we start recording. So looking at file format, you can still set the format that's used to record to the internal card. But note here that you can only choose XAVCS 4K or XAVCS I 4K. And also if you go into movie settings, you can't change this now because you have to control whether you're using 25p or 50p from the external output menu, because that controls both what's sent to the external recorder and how the camera records internally. So that's the camera setup. Now let's go and have a look at the Ninja 5. So on the source page, we obviously need that set to HDMI. And then on the input screen, you can see my settings here. And I've also got the HDMI trigger on to enable the FX3 to start and stop the Ninja. So you can cycle through the different recording formats on the record page. Uh, it's currently set to ProRes RAW. In the compression options, you can choose between ProRes RAW or ProRes RAW HQ. I'm using just normal ProRes RAW. And at the bottom, we've got the 16 by 9 metadata crop. Now what this does is it converts the clip so that it will be formatted to fit a 16 by 9 frame. By default, the uh, image that comes straight from the center is slightly not 16 by 9. So you'll have to scale it to fill the frame in Final Cut if you don't set this. So I set this to on because it just makes the post-production a little simpler. So if you're not seeing any of these options, then you want to check that you've got the latest firmware installed. I'm currently running version 10.71, but depending on when you watch this video, obviously there may be newer versions than this available. And also you do need to have ProRes RAW activated. Now this is free from Atomos, but in order to activate this on the Ninja 5, you do need to go to their website, register your device, and then get like an activation code from them, which you then put into the Ninja 5, and then that allows you to record in ProRes RAW. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to connect an SSD to the back of the Ninja. I'm using this Andy Cine Lunchbox Caddy, which uh, contains a Samsung T5 MSATA drive taken from one of their T5 external drives. I'll post links down below. If you want to look into this further, then uh, yeah, check out the description. So as you can see, this is a one terabyte T5 drive, and I'll go ahead and format it now. If you're recording audio, then you can obviously set that up on the audio page. I'm not going to be recording any audio for this example. Okay, next I want to talk about LUTs. Now this is quite an important thing to consider on the Ninja 5 because it handles LUTs differently to other monitors that I've used. In terms of the tools like the waveforms, the zebras and the false colors, they all change depending on the LUT that's applied. So here you can see the image without a LUT. So this is just the native image coming from the camera. So if I turn on the waveform, that gives you a good base level of what's coming from the camera. And I go ahead and enable the LUT now. Keep an eye on the, uh, on the waveform. Did you see how that changes? So that's literally like the LUT effect in the waveform. So you really have to keep that in mind that when you apply a LUT, you've got to consider that in the way you expose. So I tend to use 
the zebras on the camera to give me a guide for skin tones and the zebras on the external monitor to show me any areas that are being blown out. But in order to have an accurate guide to blown out whites on the external monitor, I like to make sure it matches what the camera is telling me. So what I do is set the camera so that it's showing blown out areas and then change the uh, monitor so that it's showing the same results. It's worth remembering that in ProRes RAW, both lens corrections and noise reduction are not applied. So you really need to make sure you stay on top of the way noise is being handled, or you may end up having to do a lot of denoising in post-production. The normal rules about sticking to the base ISO levels still apply here. So try and stick to 640 ISO and 12,800 ISO as much as possible. And if you have to stray too far past them, then consider changing to the nearest base level. And then you can underexpose or overexpose a little bit and correct that in post, which will probably result in less noise than trying to move too far away from those base ISO levels. So I'll go ahead now and start recording. I'm going to mess around with exposures. I'll change the white balance. And that'll give us a few things we can play with in post-production in order to see the benefits of shooting in ProRes RAW. So now that we've got the ProRes RAW footage recorded, I'll take the SSD from the Ninja 5, we'll put it onto the Mac, and I'll show you how I go about ingesting the footage, and then what I do in Final Cut Pro to prepare it for editing. Okay, let's start by connecting up the SSD. I'm also going to connect the SD card from the FX3 and copy over the files from both the camera and from the Ninja. So I'll create a folder on the desktop, and then I'll put a folder for each card inside that. And normally if I was working with multiple cards, I'd create a subfolder for each card that I've offloaded. But because I've only got one card here, I'm just going to create a folder for each. All I do is select all of the individual clips on the SSD and copy that directly into the folder on the desktop. So with the SD card from the FX3, I open it up and copy over the private folder so that all of the uh, clips and all of the data from the camera are copied over. And now we're finished with the cards, I'll eject them. So I'll open up Final Cut Pro and go ahead and create a new library. I'll call this one ProRes RAW Demo. So looking at the properties for this library, you'll see that I've just set it to standard. Now you can change this to wide gamma HDR, but if you set it to standard, then Final Cut Pro will automatically just process the clips correctly. So I'll go ahead and import the clips into Final Cut Pro now. I begin just by clicking on the import button. We'll start with all the clips from the FX3. Again, I just go through and select all the individual clips, but you'll notice that the only option I have for importing these is to copy the files to the library. With these, I can't leave them in place which means I have to duplicate them all in the Final Cut Pro library. So you can see these are now coming in. Uh, you don't have to wait for them to finish importing before you start editing, but I generally do because it's nice to know that they all come in properly. So now that's complete, I'll pop over to the inspector and click on the information tab, and you'll see that they are 3840 by 2160 25p clips. Okay, so let's go ahead and import the ProRes RAW clips from the Ninja 5. So the first thing you'll notice when we look at the clips is they look really bright and strangely coloured. This is because Final Cut Pro assumes that you're going to have an S-Log3 LUT on there, and uh, it's, it's showing it in the preview window. But because these are ProRes RAW clips, that doesn't really work. Ignore that at this stage, and we'll correct that in a moment. I'll go ahead and select all the clips by holding Shift and selecting the top and bottom one and then choosing import. Notice this time that we can choose to leave the files in place, which is a much nicer way of working because I don't have to then duplicate all that data in the Final Cut library. So I'll go ahead and choose import. As you can see, they've come into Final Cut Pro instantly, no processing required with the ProRes RAW clips. So the first thing we'll do is sort out these strange colors by removing that LUT that Final Cut Pro has applied. So I'll select all the clips and then we'll go over and look in the inspector. So the inspector is still displaying the basic information. So the first thing to do is change this to settings. Okay, so now you can see that the raw to log conversion is set to S log 3, S gamut 3, and the camera LUT is set to 
a standard Sony S-Log3 slash S-Gamma3 as well. Notice that the settings in here also cover various other cameras as well. But for now we're just going to use a Sony S-Log3 and S-Gamma3 dot Cine. And I'm just going to change the camera LUT to none for now. So I'm going to select all of the clips together and I'm going to apply the Leaming LUT Pro LUT to all of these clips. And you can see now that they've changed colour and that's been applied to all of the clips that I selected. So let's go ahead and uh, put some of these clips onto a timeline and compare them. I'll start by creating a new project. I'll call this one Demo. And this is going to be a standard 4K 3840 by 2160. And I'm going to copy in the first clip from each camera. So first I'll copy in the FX3 clip. And then I'll look down and find the uh, first clip from the Ninja 5. And I'll just check, yeah, they're the same length. This is the same shot captured on both the FX3 and uh, ProRes RAW on the Ninja 5. So you'll see as I drag between these two clips, they are very similar. The colors look the same at this stage. And also that the Ninja 5 ProRes RAW clips do look slightly wider than the FX3 clips. Now I can only assume this is because the FX3 is passing more information from the sensor through to the Ninja, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. So you can see the clips from the FX3 are 3840 by 2160 pixels. And the clips from the Ninja 5 are 4240 by 2385 pixels. So with the ProRes RAW clips, you do get quite a bit more resolution to work with. So if I select the ProRes RAW clip and then go into the inspector, you'll see that in addition to being able to set the RAW to log conversion and camera LUT, I can also go in and change the ISO, the exposure offset, and the temperature, the white balance temperature. It's worth remembering that at this stage, there is no advantage to choosing either 640 or 12,800 ISO. The only time that really makes a difference is in camera or when you're shooting. And that still applies when shooting ProRes RAW. So when shooting, then um, if you overexpose or underexpose little to try and use those base ISOs, that's the best thing to do to keep the noise down. But at this stage, changing these variable amounts will not affect the noise. The noise is already baked into the image. Underneath that, we have the exposure offset. Now that seems to work as kind of a fine adjustment between the ISO values. With this one and the white balance adjustment, you'll notice that the preview doesn't change until I release the mouse button. Now, of course, you can also go into the color border, make whatever fine adjustments you want to there as well. I think this is a really nice way of working. So we set going in and setting the exposure level using ISO and then only coming into the color board or the color wheels to fine tune the image it means that you're not using any kind of extreme settings which do tend to you know mess up the image so let's compare that then to um, the image straight out of the fx3 this is the uh, xavcsi codec so with this obviously we've got no control over the iso so all we can do is go straight into the color corrections So you'll see as I show each of these images that they were both very close to begin with. So whilst I think the ProRes RAW clip is easier to adjust, I think uh, it's easy to get good results with both of these. So you might be wondering what the difference in file size is between these two clips. So let's go ahead and have a look. I'll open up the FX3 clip first. So this is in the Finder and you can see that that is 1.32 gigabytes. And then we'll do the same thing for the ProRes RAW clip. I'll open that up in the browser and then we'll go and have a look at the file in the finder. And you can see that that one is 2.91 gigabytes. And these clips are both 44 seconds long. So the ProRes RAW files are a little over twice the size of the uh, FX3 XAVCSI file. So I'll go ahead and delete these from the project and then we'll try and find some clips that are a little bit more challenging. Now you'll see from this clip that it's just a little bit underexposed. I've tried to bring the exposure down to let a little bit more information in from that light in the background. So this would be a good example for adjusting the exposure to try and adjust for backlight. So we'll start with the ProRes RAW clip and you'll see that it's just really nice to be able to go in and just change the ISO 
and bringing up the levels so that uh, we're getting more like what we would have done from camera had I not underexposed. And again, this is happening without increasing the noise level at all. Although obviously if there is noise in the image, increasing the exposure will bring it out. So that was a really easy adjustment with the ProRes RAW clips. Okay, so let's try and do the same thing with the FX3 clips. Now, I'm by no means an expert in color correction. So I would normally just try and correct clips like this using the color board or the color wheels. Uh, normally just bringing down the shadows, punching up the highlights a little bit and then adjusting the mids to suit. So that brings us fairly close. I still don't think the results are quite as nice as those from the ProRes RAW clips. But the real benefit about the ProRes RAW clips was how easy it was to do just by selecting that ISO. Okay, so let's delete these and try something else. I'll bring in a couple of clips where I used the wrong white balance. And this is something I've done before on an actual shoot. It's so easily done when you've been filming outside and then you walk, say, into a building that's just got traditional light fittings and you grab a few shots, especially when working in S-Log and you may not be able to see it so easily on the screen. You end up with shots like this where the white balance is totally wrong and you've got to try and correct it. So we'll start with the ProRes RAW clip and as you can see we can actually adjust the temperature in post. So it's just a case of grabbing the slider, bringing it down to where I think it should be, which is probably around 5000, and straight away you can see that that problem solved. Now for me that's one of the main benefits to using ProRes RAW. On the other hand again if we try the FX3 clip, even though these are really good quality files, you know, we don't really have the tools in Final Cut Pro to be able to fix this easily. So we've got the temperature slider in the uh, color wheels, but that doesn't really do the same thing. It kind of gets it close, but now the image looks kind of pink and all the colors have gone a bit strange. Now I'm sure somebody who's really good at color grading could probably do a lot more with this. But again, for me, the main benefit is the fact that this was so easy to do with the ProRes RAW clips. So there we go. I hope that was useful. Check out this playlist for loads more Sony FX3 content. And if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. And other than that, I'll catch you in the next video.